My artery was blocked 95%. What does blood flow have to do with cash flow on your money? I want you to understand and recognize the dangers that sometimes aren't so obvious. In this episode, you're going to understand how to be able to detect when your cash flow may be impeded with warning signs that I had ignored when my heart was blocked. How can you sense the warning signs uh, on your money that's in the market? I'm going to tell the story of what happened with my heart. Now, I'm uh, 67 years old right now. And I've always sort of uh, taken my health for granted because I try to take care of my body and watch what I eat. But I knew that in my family, on my mother's side, we had a history of heart disease. In fact, my mother had open heart surgery, a quadruple bypass at age 60. Uh, she lived seven more years after that to age 67. Her brothers also had a difficulty with, with heart disease. And so many of my cousins had an open heart surgery and my brother did by age 40. But I sort of looked at their lifestyle and they drank a lot of soda and, and, and ate a, a different diet than I did. Their cholesterol was, you know, 200, 230. My cholesterol has never been over 119. Oh, I'm home free. I don't have to worry about that. And so, yeah, I, uh, I don't run marathons, but I wanted to make sure that I kept in good shape. I've uh, never wanted to be a, a, a runner because I never saw a runner with a smile on their face. <laughs> but my wife and I started running and not marathons, but maybe three miles, five miles, 10 miles and so forth. And we would do that two or three days of the week. And uh, we'd also do our uh, resistance exercises and we had trainers and nutritionists and so forth. I share in another episode how one time I, I got about 25, 30 pounds overweight. And so I actually was able to lose 30 pounds in 90 days and pretty much keep it off since then. That's another topic for another episode. The point I'm making is here. A few years ago, we were actually on our anniversary in Maui, Hawaii. We had run, usually by the end of the week, we're running about 10 miles from uh, Ka'anapali down to Kapalua and back in Maui, if you know that area. And we ran 10 miles that day. And I, I, I came in and I'm sort of, um, I've got chest pain, short of breath, not horrible, but I thought, oh golly, honey, I'm getting old. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was 65 and uh, I actually thought I was, you know, pretty good shape, more active than most of my peers. Some of them had already passed away. But then I remember coming back and shoveling snow. I would get a little bit of shortness of breath. I thought, what is up? And then uh, I, I ignored it. And in the summer, I'm mowing lawn and so forth. And I'm going, what is going on here? So I went in for my physical exam. So anything you're concerned about? I go, well, I, I'm sort of getting short of breath a li little bit, not, not bad. My cholesterol was 89. So I'm thinking, ah, no big problem. I, I, I'm probably being a baby. So he goes, uh, no, let's check this out. Long story short, I go in and I have one of those simulated treadmill EKGs where they put the chemical in and it simulates like you're on a treadmill and you're working out like crazy. And they go, uh, you've got some major blockage. I said, what? Yeah, we need, to, we need to go in and see what's going on. I thought, ah, they'll get in there and it won't be a big deal. So I go in for an outpatient procedure, but they said, you need to be ready. You need to sign this form in case we need to do bypass surgery. I go, are you serious? They inserted through here and looked and uh, I could see it on the screen. I was semi-awake. My LAD artery, if you don't know what that is, they call it the widow maker was 95% blocked at one point, 70% blocked at the other point. And I thought, no wonder <laughs> why I'm winded. They said, I can't believe you're running 10 miles with an LAD artery blocked 95%. So I watched them put in a, a, a stent in that 95% area and the 70% area. I was in and out in 90 minutes eating lunch. I could have gone skiing the next day. I felt incredible. I, I ran a week later and they were flabbergasted. They said, whoa, you're, you're where most people, you're, you're three levels higher than most people after six weeks of rehab. And I said, well, I was sort of exercising before, but I couldn't believe the oxygen and the, the energy I got from doing that. 
What was the lesson? I took my health for granted. I didn't pay attention to the little danger signs. And that's what people do with money. They don't pay attention to the danger signs. And then all of a sudden they have a major heart attack, so to speak, with their money, with their savings. Don't do that. Here's how you can adhere or pay attention to the danger signs so that you don't get wiped out with something that you could have cured in 90 minutes. I was so grateful we caught it early enough. I've uh, helped people with their money for over 45 years, but it's experiences like that with my heart where I learned, hey, Pay attention. Don't just take things for granted. Now, you've probably heard the adage, you know, uh, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. It was so nice that we were able to cure that blocked artery. And I'm so glad we caught it in time that I didn't need open heart surgery and quadruple bypass. But medicine is awesome compared to when my mother had her surgery clear back in 1978. She lived until 1985. But folks, why wait? So how do you prevent the dis-ease? See, uh, when our cells, when our arteries, when our body at a cellular level is not at ease, that's what we call dis-ease. Well, people uh, oft times have dis-ease. They're not at ease financially, but sometimes they don't even know they're not at ease and because they're not paying attention to the warning signs. When I was short of breath and I was getting a little bit of chest pain, because I guess I ran and everything else, my body just slowly adapted to the small changes and I didn't even realize why I was so sapped of energy. Well, see, that's what happens when people just get lulled to sleep into this mediocrity, this contentment that their money in the market. Okay, well, yeah, I'm still okay. I'm still alive. And, and then all of a sudden, bam, and they have a heart attack. In other words, the market crashes 40%, which it did twice in the decade from 2000 to 2010. I don't want that to happen to you. Prevent the disease, cure it. But even before having to cure it, you want to prevent it if you can. So that's why I always advise people to put their serious cash into vehicles that uh, are tax-free instead of having taxes erode away or restrict your cash flow, your artery of money. Uh, don't let inflation erode away your purchasing power. And so I put my money in vehicles that uh, inflation actually helps instead of hinders. And then I want to eliminate market volatility so that that EKG, see the market is like an EKG. And if you look at it over any 20, 30, 40, 50 year period, it's like this, you know, it's like a person with a yo-yo, hopefully walking up some stairs. But the decade from 2000 to 2010, that person with a yo-yo was sort of walking across the flat surface. The Dow Jones, the S&P 500, these different indices, they were basically where they were 10 years earlier. So it's like a market EKG. So when they looked at my EKG, when I was under that simulated stress, they could see I was not passing the stress test. My question is, is your money, would it right now pass the stress test if we had a recession, a market crash, if inflation went through the roof, if taxes went up? Would you still have incredible cash flow? In other words, would your blood flow be as good as you wanted it to be? Or would it be restricted because you weren't aware that your artery was only performing at 5% of the capacity that it could achieve? Folks, you can empower yourself to have some of the most incredible cash flow, especially in retirement, that a million bucks could generate 80 to 100,000 a year of cash flow, tax-free. Do you know what the average net after tax and fee cash flow is on a million dollars in the stock market? 4%, but you pay tax. On 40,000, you only net 20,000 after taxes and fees. So would you like an artery of cash flow that is flowing at uh, 80 or 100, okay? Or do you want it only flowing at 20% of what it could be doing. If you want to know how, get a copy of my book.
This is the laser fund, and I want you to watch this episode so you can understand how you can do this, and you'll be given the opportunity if you want to get a copy of this sent to you free. You pay $5.95 shipping and handling, but this book will show you how to be able to do what I've been talking about. Oh,